there's your first shot at a case study. Uh, and the thinking here is that these would be, um, uh, just this is just an example of kind of the idea of moving back and forth between them, and that some questions are things that would be really straight from one piece of the information, like, uh, you know, what's the side yard setback? You just go to that zoning code and you're looking for the side yard setback. You gotta track it down and figure out how to use it and then make sure you've got that information there. And in other pieces of information, we may be looking between the program and the climate analysis, or maybe we're looking at the program and then looking at the site uh, aerial photo to sort of understand what does it mean in this context, uh, or back and forth between uh, the program and the idea of the pedestrian street, which is clearly a special designation, or where the transit is located. Uh, so you're moving back and forth between these things in order to uh, be able to answer some of these questions. It's so likely if you had, uh, say, uh, 20 questions, probably three or four are pretty difficult and are uh, where you really do need to be able to interpolate from a bunch of different uh, uh, pieces of information. And probably, uh, you know, five or six are pretty straightforward. You just have to know how to use the code and you have to know how to look at the, in this case, environmental report or whatever it happens to be that comes on yours. And then the rest of them would be somewhere kind of in the middle. So they're not all gonna be super complicated and hard. They're not all gonna be just looking up the side yard setback. Uh, they'll be mostly somewhere in that middle, middle range, uh, but there will be quite a range of different possibilities. So I guess one question I have for everybody is, I mean, maybe this is your first kind of attempt at one of these. Uh, I'm curious what everybody thinks of it at this point um, as a totally different kind of exam. And I think it kind of, maybe just reflecting on that point about, that we talked about at the beginning, um, that this is a pretty different type of exam, but it's also pretty, seems to be pretty smart. Um, and uh, also, you know, sort of reasonable, I guess. Am I generating? Uh, not yet. Okay. Well, let's see here. I'll see if anyone has any other questions here. Uh, I think we've answered all of them. Uh, so with that, uh, we do have a winner of a free t-shirt, Carl from McNeil Group. Um, Way to go, Carl. Got them all right, so congratulations. We'll be sending you a free Black Spectacles t-shirt. Um, and uh, Mike, go ahead and hit the magic button there on random.org to find out who are some number 17. 17, so that looks like John W. So John W, uh, you've won a, um, a free one month ARE Prep Plus Software Learning Black Spectacles membership. So uh, congratulations to you. We'll be in touch with both of you guys um, via email probably tomorrow. So I guess with that, we don't seem to have any other questions. I think everybody's sort of... Um, it's kind of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, sort of taking it in. Maybe a little um, stunned. <laughs> re you know, remember that uh, uh, most of the exam will be just fairly simple, straightforward questions. Uh, you know, if you had 100 questions, probably 80 of them are just like uh, a straightforward question. And not only that, but uh, you know, it takes a long time to gear up for a new uh, exam type. So they're probably mostly gonna be 4.0 questions, just organized a little differently. Uh, and then there'll be these special ones, the last bunch of 20s, or maybe there's two, but uh, uh, th this is a different way of thinking about it, but it's only a portion of the exam itself. So uh, I think it's kind of interesting, but it's a little scary. Let's see here. We do have one question from uh, from Ben Champ uh, Riley. He's asking after if if you've passed the necessary three exams in ARE four, and you're sort of sitting there and you're thinking, "Gee whiz, should I should I really go and take the two for ARE five or take the other four on ARE four point Yeah. What should in in, in Mike? What, in your opinion, what should? You yeah. And so obviously, this is going to be different for different people because it's going to be dependent on how uh, how easy it was for you in four. Uh, it's going to like how comfortable you are with the vignettes. Uh, it'll depend on how comfortable you are with uh, a whole separate uh, exam on structures. Uh, you know, it'll it'll depend on all of those kinds of issues. But I got to tell you, um, you know, I think if it was me, I would just power through in 4.0. Uh, as much as I am uh, amused but annoyed by the vignettes, uh, I, I would probably just crank it through on 4.0. But I do know that this is a sort of grand opportunity that, they, that NCARB has set up for everybody. 
I, to be perfectly blunt about it, I actually think that uh, they're being pretty generous. Uh, I think there's actually some of the information that they're saying uh, doesn't show up on those other exams, and so you can just do those two. I actually think some of it does show up on those other exams because they're trying, uh, they want to make this as seamless as possible, this big transition. So it's not a bad thing to jump on. One of the things that Mark and I, when we uh, were talking about this, when we first talked to NCARB about it a few months ago, uh, is those two exams, those are going to be monster exams. So uh, the ones you're taking in 4.0 are going to be much smaller exams. Those two, if you're doing that transition thing, and it's going to be a big leap. Uh, and it's also going to be sort of a different animal, right? It's going to feel different, and you've just gotten used to the 4.0. So to me, I think if you're digging the 4.0, if you're really, if, if you're flying along and you've had a pretty good experience, I say just keep going. If you're uh, somebody who has taken it a couple of times and you had trouble because the vignette threw you off because of some dopey vignette issue, um, jump ship, go to five. You know, just uh, either do the transition or just do it in five. Uh, so it's really dependent. There is no right answer. And of course, nobody really knows until uh, the actual exam starts coming out and we start seeing what the pass rates are like. Um, but important thing to remember, just in the sort of big abstract all the way around, when you start thinking about this, it's not like being an architect has changed. Uh, the uh, needs are still essentially the same. It's gonna be the same questions. They're just organized differently. So in this case, the case study, they're organized together in, in some of them. And in other situations, they're still single questions, but they're still questions that are about being an architect and that hasn't changed in the last uh, month. Okay. Um, and I guess there's probably two, questions, two other comments there, right? Don't forget that um, if you decide that you want to try out the ARE 5 exams, you, you can't try them out. Uh, you, have, you have to commit to them. So actually taking one of the exams, you, you like formally you, transition to ARE 5.0 right, and you, you can't, can't go, go back. back to 4. The other thought is, um, just remember with any of these exams, I kind of think of it as like, there's this overhead that is involved in like figuring out how the exam works. Right. And so you've already kind of invested that time for ARE4. Exactly. You just need to decide, okay, you know, is it a good, is it a good value for me to invest that again for a different exam? Because it's very different as you yeah. just saw. And if you started to, you know, if you had invested that, uh, that time in understanding four and you really hated it, well, you know, take the chance and jump to five because maybe it's better. Uh, but if you were flying along, I say stick with it. A couple of extra questions here. Um, will the exam be limited to code info that's presented only within the case study? I mean, I think the answer is, yeah, they're going to be providing code information in the case study and their questions are going to be based on that. They're not necessarily going to be based on just... Yeah, in general, I mean, there are certain things, there's very few limited pieces of information that are based in the code that you should just have memorized. Uh, something like, uh, you know, a guardrail is 42 inches high, something like that. But there's very few things like that. Uh, the expectation is that if they're going to ask you a code question, they will give you the information. You just have to know how to get the information out of whatever it is they give you, because it may not be given to you in a sort of clear and straightforward way. Um, so, yeah, I, I would assume that uh, if you have code questions, they will, it'll be in the package of information that they give you. However, they're also likely to give you a whole bunch of other code information. Uh, and so you may have to weed through quite a bit of things in order to find it. It won't be, uh, you know, one paragraph of code information. It's likely to be 20, 30 pages of code information, which is why that search tool is such a useful thing. All right, um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, there's a couple of questions here just about the sort of basic parameters of the exam. Um, I'm going to post a link to NCARB's. Uh, they've, they've, they've actually launched the test specification, which has all the details about all the different exams in terms of how many questions there are, um, what the different question types are, um, how much time you have for each exam. So I'll post a link here. We'll also post it on, um, uh, on Twitter as well. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead and close it up there. Um, so I want to thank you, Mike. Uh, for delving in uh, to this uh, this new world here for ARE 5. And thank you um, everybody for uh, rolling with us as we sort of test out these as well for us because yep. it's all a new uh, new world for us as well. Yeah, so if you guys want to attend our next ARE Live broadcast where we're going to focus on the other 
uh, exam for ARE 5. That's part of the transition strategy. That's the project development and documentation um, exam. We'll likely do the same thing where we develop a case study um, and issue it as a, um, as a mock exam like we just did. You can go to blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register to attend. We're also actually going to be doing that live here in Chicago. We're actually going to be doing it here at Black Spectacles offices in the Merchandise Mart in Chicago. So um, that's going to be um, that information. If you would like to attend, we'll also have a uh, reception afterward um, so that you can take a load off after <laughs> uh, after this. Um, we'll be available. We're doing it in collaboration with our friends at uh, AI Chicago and their Young Architects Forum. Um, so we're just finalizing details for that. Um, we'll send an email to everybody um, so you guys can, if you're you know in the area, you can you can come along um, and meet Mike. Uh, and uh, as I say, um, hang around for uh, for reception afterwards. But don't let that make you not come. So. <laughs> That's right. Um, so yeah, uh, and you know, for that, just like today's episode, you'll get to ask questions to Mike, share your answers. If you come live, you can probably buy him a drink or hand him a drink. Um, so yeah, so that's what's coming up uh, next month on in September. Uh, if you want to, if you're online, you want to learn more about our area exam prep curriculum, you can go to blackspectacles.com, where you can try out any of the free uh, course videos. Again, we don't have the area five stuff up yet. Uh, it will launch on October first. Um, uh, but in the meantime, for those of you who are ready to start preparing for the area, and if you're already an AIA member, you can use coupon code eight two four one six P P D Y T to get a 15% discount for the entire duration of your ARE exam prep membership. And then finally, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think. Share any suggestions you may have. I promise that we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune in our next episodes. So thanks for watching.